The GTA real estate market saw an 11.5% increase in the number of sales compared to December of last year, which is interesting because December is typically a slow month and you'd think that this December in particular would be the slowest given where interest rates are and the general sentiment in the economy and real estate market. There was a 6.6% drop in the number of new listings, a 19.3% increase in active listings, which means there was more to choose from. An average price increased 3.2% compared to December last year. Let's take a look at the Toronto data and break down what's actually happening here. But before we do that, I quickly want to elaborate on the title of this video. The last time we saw 65,000 sales on TREB was back in 2001, when there were 67,000 sales. And to give you a frame of reference, in 2019, which was a normal year, there were 87,000 sales. In 2020, there were 95,000 sales. In 2021, there were 121,000 sales. And in 2022, there were 75,000 sales. And what's really crazy is that the sales volume was cut in half from 2021 to 2023. Stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to dig deep into a few key data points to show you what might happen this spring. So if you're looking at buying or selling this year, I highly recommend you stay with me here. We'll start with the average price because I know that's what everyone wants to see. Toronto detached homes started the year at 1.5 million and ended at 1.6. Semis started at 1.33 and ended at 1.42. Townhouses started at 1.15 and ended at 1.17. And finally, condos started at 711,000 and actually ended up barely lower at 709,000. Toronto condos saw an insane increase in the number of new and active listings while a slowdown in the number of sales which impacted values. People were trying to sell their condos but buyers weren't qualifying to purchase at the prices sellers wanted which resulted in buyers negotiating lower sale prices eventually. Again, it was a nominal difference of a couple thousand dollars so let's not put a whole lot of weight into it. The number of sales across all major home types has been decreasing over the past few months, which is completely normal for the last quarter of the year. But what's not totally normal is that the number of sales is actually outpacing compared to what's happening with the number of new listings and the number of active listings. The number of new listings is dropping like a ton of bricks across all major home types. And it looks even more drastic than Q4 of 2022 because we had so many new listings hit the market in Q3 and Q4 of 2023, so the drop looks crazy. But really, we're sitting at about the same number of new listings per home type as we were back in December of 2022. And now we get to active listings, which I really wanted to see this month and I expected this to happen. Active listings across all home types has dropped significantly as well. But what do these three stats actually mean? It means that because people were buying up the available inventory or sellers were removing their listings from the MLS and fewer new listings were hitting the MLS, months of inventory went down. And this is something we didn't see last year. In fact, months of inventory increased in Q4 of 2022. And in Q4 of 2023, it's come down. And that means it would take less time for all available listings to sell if no new listings were brought to the market. Based on the months of inventory stat, the market has become tighter and more competitive. Earlier, we were talking about sales and new listings, which are the other two stats. And if you take the number of sales divided by the number of new listings, you get the sales to new listings ratio. This sales to new listings ratio is essentially the inverse of months of inventory. And the sales to new listings ratio skyrocketed in December compared to last December, which is the second largest spike you see on this graph. But let's break this down by each individual home type because it may be easier to see what's actually happening. Detached homes in blue saw 318 new listings in December, but there were also 371 detached sales in the exact same month. So there were 53 more detached sales than there were new listings in December, and that represents 117% sales to new listings ratio. 
Semis in Orange had 83 new listings and 128 sales, so there were 45 more sales than new listings, and that represents a 154% sales to new listings ratio. Townhouses in Gray had 45 new listings and 40 sales, so the sales to new listings ratio was 89%. And finally, condos in yellow had 958 new listings and 641 sales, representing a 67% sales to new listings ratio. Although the condo sales to new listings ratio was significantly lower than the semi-market, if you were selling a condo in December, there was less competition hitting the market and enough sales keeping the market strong. To recap this and provide clarity on what this actually means in terms of market conditions, detached had 117% sales to new listings ratio, semis 154, townhouses 89, and condos 67. A buyer's market is under 40%, a balanced market is between 40 and 60%, and a seller's market is over 60%. And as we can see here, all home types technically sit in a seller's market because new listings dropped and buyer demand was strong enough to counterbalance. All right, so I did promise an analysis on a few data points that might show us where the market is heading. If we take a look at the average price graph, we can see that May of 2023 was the peak of the year. Undeniably, at the time, we had not seen interest rates increase since January of 2023, which put confidence in the marketplace. And in May of 2023, a five-year fixed rate was at its lowest point. But either way, May was the peak of the market in 2023. And what was happening in the market aside from the Bank of Canada holding their policy rate and fixed rates lowering? Well, the number of active listings were low compared to the rest of the year. In fact, the number of active listings today are either in line with or lower than the number of active listings in May of 2023. New listings are bound to go up over the next few months and into the spring. That's just something we can expect. But if buyer demand remains strong-ish, that means active listings won't rise as quickly, meaning there will be fewer options for buyers to choose from and thus prices begin to rise. And we of course can't ignore the fact that fixed rates are falling and the Bank of Canada is expected to cut rates in 2024, more specifically starting in the spring of 2024. If you're thinking about buying or selling and want to learn more about the purchasing process or about your home's value, go to the first link in the description and book a meeting directly into my calendar.